Regarding the construction of the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yasawi, there is a legend among the people that the ruler of Morinor, Amir Timur, ordered the construction of a mausoleum in honor of Koja Ahmed Yasawi, unlike any other in the world. However, at night, when the walls of the mausoleum were almost completed, a large bull appeared and destroyed everything. This happened three times. People could not solve this mystery. At that time, in a dream, Koja Ahmed Yasawi appeared to Amir Timur and advised, First, you need to build a mausoleum over the grave of the holiest of the holy, my teacher, Arstan Bab. The ruler immediately ordered the construction of the mausoleum over the grave of the saint Arstan Bab. Only after that was the construction of the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yasawi successfully completed. Koja Ahmed Yasawi, a figure revered throughout the Turkic world, a disseminator of Islam, philosopher and poet. His work, The Divine Wisdom, was widely known in the Turkic world. Some researchers believe that Yasawi was born in the early 12th century and died in the early 13th century, while others mention the year of his death as 1166-67. In 1928, archaeologist Mikhail Masson suggested that a mausoleum had already been erected at the preacher's burial site. Studying the composition of bricks and the ornamentation of this mausoleum, art historian Lia Mankovskaya confirmed that the first mausoleum in honor of Yasawi was built in the second half of the 12th century. <laughs> The mausoleum of Azariyat Sultan is the second mausoleum. The first one was built in the 12th century with the burial chamber and an entrance on the north side. The height of the building of the first mausoleum dating back to the 12th century was about 15 meters and the width was 6-7 meters with three rooms. The mausoleum had a courtyard, a large hall of gatherings and a mosque. When and how was the current mausoleum built? Let's go back in time. In the last quarter of the 14th century, the ruler of Maranar, Amir Timur, conquered many cities along the Sirdaria. In 1389, Amir Timur arrived in Turkestan, which was then called Yasir. There he first saw the dilapidated mausoleum of the preacher, whom he deeply respected. In 1392, Amir Timur came to this city again. Khan Tohtamish of the Golden Horde looted the mausoleum two three times, raiding Sauran and then Turkestan. After plundering the mausoleum and all the residents in the area, he took all the loot with him. Then Amir Timur pursued him. When Tohtamish crossed Kızıl Arda, he abandoned all the stolen goods. Amir Timur returned everything to its place and ordered the construction of this mausoleum. According to the archaeologist Mikhail Masson, Amir Timur built this monumental mausoleum with political calculation. Amir Timur's goal in building this grand architectural monument in Central Asia was to gain the trust of the nomadic peoples, show respect for their saint, strengthen the spiritual unity of the peoples professing Islam, inspire the nomadic peoples with his great goal and demonstrate the immense power of the empire. Amir Timur achieved his goal. He built the first grand monument in Central Asia with the largest brick dome. About 100,000 people participated in its construction. 
In the city of Sauran, 40 kilometers from Turkestan, they specifically produced burnt bricks, as well as decorative details and tiles. People formed a chain between Sauran and Yasse, passing finished bricks from hand to hand to the construction site. The thickness of the mausoleum walls varies 1.7, 2.53, 3.10 meters. The thickness of the entrance portal reached up to 5 meters. Millions of bricks are laid here, each brick weighing 4, 4.5 kilograms, and these are the lightest of them all. All of this is supported by ordinary clay. Other buildings built alongside the mausoleum of Ahmed Yesawi by the orders of Amir Timur have not survived to this day and have deteriorated. Some collapsed even during the construction phase. According to researchers, their foundation was very strong. But despite this, the structures turned out to be short-lived. The entrance portal of the Ahmed Yasawi mausoleum was deepened by 5 meters and built from a mixture of clay and stone. Clay was used in the construction of other parts of the building. However, scientists claim that this was a refined clay purified from sand, water and salts and needed for a long time. <laughs> The scientific name for such material is pozzolanic cement. Pozzolan is a powdery solution, a mixture of volcanic ash and clay. It was made in Rome, Greece. When the Arabs conquered Spain and Portugal in the 7th, 8th centuries, they borrowed the technology for making this material and introduced it in their land. Of course, we won't find volcanic ash here, so ancient architects burned reeds and used their ash. 60-70% of the solution is reed ash. It's very black, but it doesn't let water or moisture through, similar to cement, and it resembles solid glue. They say that 7-8 rows of the lower part of the Yasawi mausoleum were built using this material to prevent water infiltration. Art historian Lia Mankowska believes the construction of the mausoleum took place in two stages. The first period begins in 1389-1391 and ends in the mid-90s of the 14th century. During this time, the height of the main entrance increased to 14.63 meters, the walls of the Kazandik reached 12.8 meters and the walls of the burial chamber reached 11.8 meters. All this work was carried out by architects from Central Asia and local construction workers. The second stage of the process was completed in 1397. Thus, all parts of the entrance were completed, the domes of the central hall and burial chamber were built, the room in the northwest part of the building was transformed into a mosque, and adjacent rooms were plastered. Iranian masters took on the finishing and decorative work. The location of Azriat Sultan Mausoleum is where a large Maserat was located, covering an area of six hectares. Since the first century AD, people began to bury here. The peculiarity of this place is that, in addition to the Yasawi Mausoleum and the Mosque of Koja Ahmed Yasawi, there were burials of many other saints, such as Ilyas Khan, Shorganat Khan, Kokaras Khan, Auliye Khan. The builders decided to leave these niches to reduce the weight of the walls and to avoid accidentally damaging the remains of the buried. Previously, all of them had gravestones. There are 35 rooms in the mausoleum. 12 rooms are located on the first floor. The main ones include the burial chamber, mosque, kazandik, dining room, well room and library. The central hall of the mausoleum is called kazandik. Here a magnificent example of medieval bronze casting is installed, the work of the master Abdelaziz Sharafuddin Tabrizi, Daikazan. Its height is 158.3 centimeters, weight 2 tons, capacity 3,000 liters. The dome of the hall where Taikazan is located is the largest dome in Central Asia in Kazakhstan. Its height is 39 meters. It is adorned with clay plates made of light green jade. More than 20 rooms on the second floor of the mausoleum serve no purpose. They are skillfully built in the form of a labyrinth, which firmly supports the building's foundation. 
there are four corridors in the building, two of which are located vertically and the other two horizontally. These corridors divide the building into eight separate blocks, which also influenced its seismic resistance. Thus, if one block collapses during an earthquake, the other blocks in the central hall will have to support the massive dome. The collapsed block can be rebuilt and attached to the others. In addition, these corridors served as the main ventilation system for the building. The wind blowing from different sides moves through these corridors, circulating air, preventing the appearance of moisture and dampness in the structure. The construction of the main entrance of the mausoleum was not completed. The peshtak and the lower part of the minarets remained in the same state in which they were prepared for cladding with quartered patterned Mayolica panels. There are various legends passed down by generations about this. Some say that the craftsmen could not complete the construction due to unrequited love. In reality, after the death of Amir Timur in 1405, his son Shahrukh declared amnesty for the craftsmen from Iraq and Iran, sending them back to their homeland. This circumstance led to the suspension of construction. It is known that there had been a plan of the building ahead of construction. Unfortunately, it did not survive. Based on the analysis, the height should have been about 15 meters higher. Timur had planned to build a large empire. He conquered the entire Middle East, taking with him chief architects who participated in the construction of the mausoleum. We can still see the results of their work. For example, the name Hadji Hassan Shirazi is written on the external wall. An inscription has survived. I completed the work in 797-798. Only the eastern, western and northern facades of the building are decorated. Qufic inscriptions praising Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him rung along the walls of the mausoleum. On the main dome there is an inscription, all power belongs to Allah. There are nine ten styles of Arabic script. The geometric Qufic style is used here. There are inscriptions, Allah Hurabi Muhammad Nabi. This means worship Allah, honor the Prophet Muhammad. In the mausoleum, there are two doors that have survived from the 14th century to present day. These are the doors of the Kazandik and the gates of the burial chamber. On these historical monuments, there are also instructive words that make everyone ponder. For example, on the upper part of the Kazandik door, it is written, the gates of the Saeeds are the gates of happiness. Love for the Saeeds is the key to happiness. The first restoration work in the mausoleum was carried out by the ruler of Bukhara, Abdullah Khan II, in 1593-1598. He ordered the reconstruction of the arch above the Peshtak, the construction of a bathhouse and the repair of cells. The mosque suffered the most. There is no foundation on the western and northern walls of the mosque. We filled it in later. According to Pivtsov, many bones were found during the excavations under the Mihrab in 1969. During the conquest of the southern part of Kazakhstan by the Russian Empire, 12 shells were fired into the building during artillery shelling. 11 of them reached the target, destroying the dome of the well room and the dining room. The patterns on the outer wall of the dining room depicted in photographs did not survive. There were two domes on top. The Russians could not recreate them. It was difficult to build a round dome from rectangular bricks. Therefore, they built a dome in the form of a cross vault. From below, it looks like a dome, but externally flat. This happened in 1910. The custodians of the mausoleum independently raised the necessary funds to repair it. 
In 1938, during the repair and restoration of the architectural monument, the dome of the Kazandik and the roof of the building were faced, gutters were installed, the foundation was strengthened, and the worn-out patterns of the mausoleum were restored. The mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yasawi in the city of Turkestan. Currently, restoration work is underway to preserve this remarkable 14th century architectural masterpiece. In 1951-1959, a foundation was laid under the walls that had no foundation. The facades and domes were restored. In 1978, the mausoleum began to function as a museum. In 1989, the mausoleum was reorganized into the State Historical and Cultural Museum Reserve Azriat Sultan. It is considered one of the oldest pantheons of the Kazakh people, as more than 3,000 Kazakh Khans, bees, and sultans rest here. According to the latest data, the names of 232 people buried here are known to this day. Among them are 21 Khans, about 30 bees, more than 60 Bathurs, four advisors to the Khan. From 1993 to 2000, the mausoleum was restored by Turkish construction workers. During that time, they reinforced the building's foundation. Every meter, 15 meter piles were driven in, reinforcement was installed, and high quality concrete was poured, which doesn't allow water or air to pass through. This new modern method would stop the foundation from settling. To solve the problem of humidity levels in the mausoleum, a test equipment was brought from Finland. 20 pieces of this device were installed in all of the mausoleum rooms. Specialists from Russia, Uzbekistan and Iran were involved. The monitoring calculations are carried out currently in stages. Including the mausoleum in the list of protected monuments of global significance was a big task. During the restoration works of 1951-1957, concrete was poured in excessive amounts, so specialists had to remove the surplus as much as possible. Thus, meeting the strict requirements of the UNESCO Commission, this unique monument, unparalleled not only in Kazakhstan but also in Central Asia, was included in the list of World Cultural Heritage. Timur was kissing the was weirder subtrong is the summer canta recreps during his reign, Timur built five, six such mausoleums in Samarkand, Shekhrisaps, and Turkestan. Among them are Big Aksaray in Shekhrisaps, Bibi Hanim, Gur Amir, and the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yusawi in Turkestan. The list of monuments that have survived to this day includes the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yusawi. Some of the buildings in Samarkand were restored. According to specialists, one of the mausoleums of Central Asia that has preserved its form and architectural features is our Yesawi mausoleum. <laughs> In the work Biography of Tamerlan, there is a story. Amir Timur visits the tomb of Koja Ahmed Yasawi before going on a campaign against Bayezid I, Yildirim Sultan. When he got into trouble during the campaign, he began to read the wisdom of Koja Ahmed Yasawi, and then the path opened to him. Repeating the lines from his verses 70 times, he achieved victory. Is this fiction or truth? Nobody knows the exact answer. All we know is that the mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yasawi is a great historical legacy of Amir Timur, a unique gem of world architecture. <laughs>